Now, studio joining me on our legal help space is Mukul Agarwal, Associate Nit Nishit Desai Associates. Mukul, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Let's get started with the first question. Now, uh, joining us on the line is Jitendra Rustagi. Hi, Jitendra. What's your question? Yeah, hi. Uh, my question is regarding. Uh, actually, I bought a flat uh, three years back from Builder Exotica Developers, and uh, in the layout, I can see that there are two bedrooms. But uh, like a month ago, and actually visited my flat for okay. uh, home loan purpose, and he told me that uh, in the layout it. It is actually two bedroom, but in original it is three. So uh, I have few queries. Uh, one is regarding uh, what are what could be the possible implications of such such a mismatch, and second would be uh, like is there any possibility that I can modify the uh, original layout? Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, the buyer pays for something, is shown something, and uh, the built-up area is something different. So whose liability is this? Uh, because the builders, the buyer's title gets affected. So and ultimately he has to run around offices and get it cleared. Yeah. So Jitendra, in this case, uh, since seller is the builder, uh, it's actually his liability if he is submitting a, a document which is not correct. Uh, the remedy to that is not that complicated. You can actually approach the registrar and submit a, a fresh deed, a rectification deed, which uh, you both have to enter. You need to first of all file an application with the re uh, registrar stating uh, that this is the correct map and this is the reason for uh, the actual discrepancy that arose in the beginning. Uh, <coughs> the application once accepted by the registrar uh, can proceed and uh, as far as your question regarding liability, the seller has a liability in this case. Over and above, if an intention is proved against, uh, uh, if an int intention is proved that for any uh, kind of wrongful gain he did that, he might also suffer some kind of a criminal penalty in this case. And what about the enhanced cost that he'll have to now bear the brunt of the buyer? There is uh, no enhanced cost. It, it will just be uh, going uh, ahead as a new rectification deed. Uh, the space gets increased, uh, the buyer has to pay for it? That should be uh, that should be uh, the seller's responsibility in this case. As okay. I mentioned, uh, the seller had the initial onus that uh, he provides the correct document in the first go. Okay. Next question coming in from Malbika Patnaik. Hi, Malbika. Go ahead with your question. Hello, everyone. Thanks for picking my query. I have invested in a project at Bhuneshwar in August 2012. The completion date was February 2014. Okay. But in the meantime, uh, on April 2014, builder got arrested in a land fraud case, another land fraud case. So our project was in Midway. All right. So, and and in and the director, there is no director to whom we can rely on to carry out the project. Because uh, there were three directors in the company. One got arrested. Two others long left before. They were uh, left before. Okay. So what is my question is what is our legal op option? Whether go for the consumer case or a civil case? Okay. Malibika had also shared us details that um, HDFC had uh, released about uh, sixty percent of the loan amount to her. Mm -hmm. uh, so don't you think there's also a liability of the lender in this case because they usually go for these tags, bank approved uh, project. Okay. So what process should he take? Should she take now? Right. So in this case, as far as I see, uh, the developer has a power of attorney to my understanding, uh, which is generally a JDA model that we adopt. And uh, uh, the developer was entitled to uh, develop the property, but ultimately what happened is he got arrested. So in this case, what best remedy I would say is you uh, look after for a uh, refund of your claim for which you can uh, go ahead and uh, file a case in the consumer court or else uh, a more stricter measure would be you find a winding up application in the court for that you should first approach uh, uh, you should first take the step of like uh, giving a statutory notice of 21 days uh, saying that uh, so and so is your uh, issue and you uh, want the money to be refunded back uh, as far as the bank is concerned uh, with uh, there can be a claim for deficiency of duty, uh, but that is uh, very much subject to the fact that uh, what were the terms or what were the internal processes that the bank was required to follow while releasing the money. So uh, once we can see that, uh, you can approach 
uh, uh, the consumer forum against the bank also, if at all there is a deficiency of service, which I said depends on the terms of the contracts also. All right. So, Malvika, your best option is to seek a refund and to uh, file some case uh, wherein the assets of the company will be attached. Okay. Next uh, question comes from Davinder. He wrote us. Uh, he wrote to us saying, "I signed a notarized leave-in license agreement of 11 <coughs> months. Uh, the licensee has now sublet part of the house against my agreement, uh, and uh, his le relatives are the licensee's re relatives are staying in that part now. The licensee is also not paying any rent and is threatening force against the." landlord uh, the licensee's relatives are to be treated as trespassers he wants to know and how should he evict the licensee yeah so this is quite a uh, quite a normal scenario uh, we keep on seeing these kind of cases a lot and uh, what uh, you should keep in mind that eviction would specifically depend on whether or not the property is covered under some kind of rent control laws if it's covered under rent control laws then the tenant does have a right to uh, first get a notice and then also rectify whatever uh, problem is there. If he does that, then the uh, uh, landlord cannot effectively evict. Uh, however, uh, in your case, irrespective if it's covered under rent control or not, uh, what you should do is you should at least send him a notice, uh, a written notice uh, uh, stating that uh, you need the property to be evicted. Uh, and it will be advisable from a rent control and a non-rent control perspective also that you mention that why you want the property to be uh, vacated. You can uh, say, suppose, mention that you need the property for your own personal use, your parents' use or for your children's use. That gives a strong ground for eviction tomorrow. And then uh, going forward, uh, you can uh, 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 file a case for position of the property in the court. Uh, once you get a, a judgment in your favor, the execution process can begin and that's generally done through the sheriff and uh, the, with respect to the criminal part, uh, uh, if at all, I, I understand in such situations it does happen that uh, the person tries, tries to intimidate and say that uh, he'll cause some kind of a harm to the landlord, uh, you can very well approach uh, the nearest uh, station uh, officer uh, to file a, a FIR. If uh, the FIR is not registered over there, you can go to the Commissioner of Police. If not, you can file a uh, criminal complaint, uh, a complaint in the magistrate's court and he can then take cognizance directly of your matter. Mukul, uh, will Davinder get a fair fight? Because uh, what we know, the Rent Control Act mm -hmm. uh, presently is quite archaic. The government is even trying to tweak yeah. it. It's heavily skewed in favour of the tenant. It's, it is. So, as I mentioned, in your notice, you mention that you need, uh, there, are, there are certain specific grounds in which you can actually uh, uh, carve out that, okay, the tenant should actually evict. Say, you need to uh, pose some kind of a genuine ground and say that uh, I actually need the property for my own self. Uh, I don't own any kind of property and uh, maybe my children are coming back <coughs> from, uh, or my parents do need the property for staying. I don't have any other place to stay and hence I need it. You should be genuine in that show that you're genuine and be very strong on the paper, that would I say. All right, uh, Mukul Agarwal there, helping you out, giving you advice on how to deal with your legal uh, property disputes. Mukul, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Thank you.